edition of Where the 99 Lead. I'm Andrew Joyce, your host, and Where the 99 Leads. It's a program brought to you by the University of Pikeville, where we talk all things regarding the University of Pikeville, uh, different areas of the academic world at the university. We talk athletics. We talk about the Kentucky College of Osteopathic Medicine, new programs, new majors. And today we will talk about humanities on the hill. You don't want to miss today's show. It's an exciting program. And where the 99 lead? We talk about those historic 99 steps that lead to the University of Pikeville campus, but also lead from campus to the community and into the world. Special guest today, first time on Where the 99 Lead, welcome Dr. Philip Westgate, Associate Professor of Music at the University of Pikeville. Welcome in, Dr. Westgate. Thank you. Let's talk about your background, where you come from, and how you arrived at the University of Pikeville. Oh, I came here, I've been, this is starting my third year here at the university. Um, I was in Tuscaloosa, Alabama for 20 years at Stillman College, and I'm just very excited to be here at the University of Pikeville and doing what I do. Doing what you do, and that is? Um, I teach music appreciation, uh, American music and classical music appreciation, and then I teach music theory and uh, piano and accompany the choir. Very good. Dr. Brig Brigida Anderson, Chair of the Division of Humanities and Professor of English mm -hmm. at the University as well. Brigida, if you could tell us about your background and your arrival at UPike. I don't think I'm going to mention how long I've been here. <laughs> Todd, you make me feel really, really old. Um, as a matter of fact, I've been here for the 100th anniversary of the university, so. <laughs> um, I'm an English professor, and uh, that means that I teach just about everything that falls under the heading English. I specialize in American literature, and uh, lately I've also been teaching German, which is a, a great joy of mine. So under, under that um, hat, under the professor hat, I'm, I'm very busy, especially lately with, with the two fields. And then as chair of the humanities division, I do what, what paperwork needs to be done and I try to, to lead the division into, into the 21st century. Sure. Whatever new is out there, we want to do and we want to do it in, in an excellent way. You've been around campus for a while. You've seen yes. a lot of changes that took place at the University of Pikeville, then Pikeville College. What have been some of the most exciting changes you've seen on campus? I think for us, the, the biggest change, for me the biggest change was definitely the medical school arrival. Um, and for a person in the humanities, somebody who lives and breathes humanities, that was a bit scary at sure. the time because we weren't sure whether we would matter. Would right. students come here mostly to go the scientific route and then enter the medical school. That, thank goodness, had not, has not been the case. We are, we are thriving. We have just as much enrollment as, we, as, the, as the sciences, and we, we do our job. We are recognized on campus, and we, we're, we're happy. We really are content, and we have, this year in particular, with new faculty arriving, we really have a, a good, solid faculty and students who who appreciate what we do. Sure. On campus for 20 plus years, have the students changed at all from yes. then to now? Yes, How most so? definitely. It was very interesting for me to, to hear through, well to see through President Owens's eyes, the, the times, the 80s, when he reminded us that at the time there was a predominance of non-traditional students. Sure. When you live it, you don't see it, you don't notice it so much. But how unusual that was at the time. And looking back, it really was the case. We had plenty of students who were, you know, I was 29 years old, uh, who were my age or older. And um, I felt like I had to put my foot down because I was teaching folks who, who were, um, who could have been my mom. Sure. And. Um, and that has, that has changed drastically. We are definitely a residential university now, uh, much different. And uh, we truly are a liberal arts university. We can, we can put our name next to any other university in that realm. And the humanities are still important today. 
more than ever. You betcha. Yes. How does an English professor hang out with a music guy? It's an odd pair today. We're going to talk about that. Dr. Westgate, you're here to talk about a series of events that are coming up uh, on campus, the faculty and students working on Humanities on the Hill. What is it? Humanities on the Hill is an opportunity for the humanities area to show the, the rich um, uh, texture that the, as they fit into the tapestry of the, of the university. And um, all, all areas of the humanities division are going to, they have prepared uh, presentations, performances, uh, things like that, that will uh, highlight what it is they do at the university and, and you know, what they do as a area, part of the humanities. Let's talk about some of those events. Uh, each of the human someone may be tuned in and say, "What are the humanities at UPike?" The humanities at UPike uh, is it's you know we're a liberal arts college, so it is it is those areas of English and music and communications and art and uh, have I left anyone out, Doctor. Well, we have this nice uh, acronym, Creams, and I and I use it because yeah. I can't remember them all uh, offhand. Communication, religion, English, art, music, Spanish. Then we have some new ones. We have um, film and media arts studies, sure. arts administration. And uh, then we have humanities as its own field. We have German, not with a major or a minor, uh, but we really and truly are all over the place. And as indicated with the film and media arts major and the arts administration, we try to be as innovative as can be and we reach out to the market. What is it that our students can actually do with a humanities degree? Because there sadly is still with those who pay the bill for this education, yes. the misconception out there that, well, this is all uh, spacey and nice and fulfills the soul, but who pays the bill later on? Sure. Uh, is there somebody out there who hires you? So that's why we really need to be alert constantly. How's the market? Is there a demand? And uh, I think we, we, are, we are on the case and we're meeting the demand. Humanities on the Hill, when's the celebration? Uh, it's on October the 10th, that's a Friday. And um, we have we start at, with our activities at 10 o'clock in the morning, okay. and we go through the whole day with different um, presentations and things that goes up until uh, nine o'clock that night. Very good. Where do the activities take place? Um, all over the campus. We've we've tried to pick venues and places uh, where it showcases you know the campus and it shows how embedded we are in the campus. Um, there'll be outdoor activities. Indoor activities, uh, we're using both the Christman Auditorium and Booth Auditorium. Right. And then some, some interesting outdoor um, places like the, there's the, uh, I guess it'd be a landmark in a way called The Rock. Sure. And we'll have uh, drama performed at The Rock. Very there'll good. be two shows there. And then um, we're gonna, the art department is doing, uh, uh, it's kind of a all day kind of event. It's called Chalk the Walk, and they're going to create art on the sidewalk. And they have a space, you know, designated for that on the campus, and people can just come and, and work on a, you know, piece there or something on them. So it'll be very interesting to see what they come out with by the end of the day. Of course, we hope it doesn't rain, but. Very good. Uh, Dr. Philip Westgate, uh, our guest on this edition of Where the 99 Lead, along with Dr. Brigida Anderson. And Dr. Anderson, how did the idea of the celebration develop? And what do events like this, Humanities on the Hill, add to the UPike student experience? It started a long time ago, two or three years ago, when we as a faculty, as the complete faculty, chose experiential learning sure. for our accreditation project. Right. We felt that it was needed our, that our students would learn by doing. That's an old concept, but we didn't have it officially recognized on campus. We had random uh, success, successes with it in different classrooms, but nobody had an official program for it. So now we do a budget for it and lots of our faculty are 
have embarked on projects with their students, especially in the humanities. So that was already embedded on campus. In addition to that, we felt that we really needed to showcase what was going on in the humanities because we have a very active faculty, we have lots of honor societies, we have clubs, we have all those activities, but we felt nobody really knows about them. Sure. Um, not on campus and certainly not in the community. Um, and that made us sad. So that was number two. And then when it dawned on us that, goodness, this is the year of 125 celebration, the big 125, um, everybody's just talking about 125, the, the anniversary, sure. we thought, well, the stars are aligned, all those three, we need to have a festival. And um, nobody better to organize this than, than Todd, because he, um, though he is a great artist, and a and a concert pianist you you uh, wouldn't know because he is so organized and so diligent and and a and a and a business person <laughs> to boot but he took the reins and uh, coordinated this this massive project right. so for the first time now we have a division putting on a festival um, we really really hope for good weather because <laughs> if the weather um, is not good then we we flop so much of it takes place outside on purpose because we want the campus to shine right. it's it's such a pretty campus now uh, that we wanted to incorporate the outdoors and um, we just have to really uh, hope and we know that the division itself the faculty is already excited the students are those who are involved sure. uh, and this will be a highlight that we hope to to continue we already have ideas for next year and we'll cross our fingers with the weather and we'll contact every weatherman we know and make sure that we get a perfect weather day on october 10th <laughs> dr westgate several events planned you've touched on those a little bit do we have a rundown of the events? Things sure. get started at 10, sure. let's talk about it. They get it. started at 10. There's a, a poster display from the communications division, and that will be uh, at the Benefactors Plaza. That's an outdoor event. True. And uh, that will be the advanced public speaking students will be uh, presenting posters and there to talk about their posters and things. Um, then, um, let's see, in the, uh, like I said, the chalk, the walk, will start at 11 and goes until 1 o'clock. Right. And then um, at 2 o'clock, the um, college choir is going to present a concert in conjunction with the religion department, uh, which will explore the history of the University of Alabama, or excuse me, University of Pikeville through narration and song. Right. And um, then at 3.30 and 5 o'clock, or 5.30 rather, uh, the English department is going to present uh, a uh, play at the Rock, mm -hmm. and it's based on some of the. It's a, based on Shakespeare, but it's. Uh, I wouldn't call it a play. It's a skit. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's funny. It's definitely it's funny. Okay. It's a skit, and it's based on characters from his Shakespeare's *Midsummer's Night's Dream*, and then um, the um, art gallery. Um, ha currently has a show up with the artist Steve Ward in it and they are hosting a reception for him at 4.30 and then uh, our um, uh, film and media arts program is uh, presenting a film series from 6 to 6.50 at um, in uh, Christman Auditorium and that will be of student work and documentaries and that they have done. Mm -hmm. And then um, at seven o'clock, we have kind of a headliner, if you want, concert. Um, there is a musical group called Appalatin, and they will be performing at seven o'clock in Booth Auditorium. Of course, everything is free, and we just would like everyone to, you know, feel like they can come. The students are coming, you know, for to as part of their classes or just because they have friends involved and are interested sure. and then we just really would like to invite the whole community to come up and experience you know at least some portion of the humanities on the hill sure
Humanities on the Hill at the University of Pikeville, October 10th. Mark your calendar. Dr. Anderson, how are the faculty and students involved in planning and promoting the events? I was, <clears throat> excuse me, I was just going to say as, as Todd ran down the events, the only event on that long list that is not faculty or student driven is the headliner, is the Appalachian concert, and sure. we couldn't possibly uh, produce that. Um, the Spanish faculty found, located this, this band. Um, they're all over the internet. There are, there are plenty of YouTube um, sequences. If anybody's interested to check them out, we were smitten when we, when we saw them. They combined this wonderful uh, Latin rhythm with Appalachian, with an Appalachian uh, feel. And so we thought, well, this is it. This has to be here. So we can, we can really feel the Spanish influence. And uh, we weren't sure if we should make it a separate event, but it fit our, our humanities on the hill right. idea perfectly. So we asked. They had an opening for the tents, and they were available. They're in Louisville. They're going to come. But all the other events are completely faculty student driven. Sure. So the students are preparing with faculty, for example, the English, the skit. I really don't want to go in the direction of a play. Um, they're volunteers. Um, the students are not even in, in a class, enrolled in a class in most cases. Right. They're doing this outside of class, um, sometimes for extra credit, sometimes just because they, they have the time. And uh, they just want to have fun. Sure. Apparently, uh, I have not seen this on purpose, the, uh, the rehearsal for the Shakespeare. I just want to have a good laugh when I go. And the threat was, if we don't have enough students for the, uh, for the performance, then, um, then faculty will have to. So I announced in all of my classes, we have to find students to do this. And there were plenty that were more than, uh, than needed. Dr. So, Weska, uh, we've talked about Apple Latin, the concert. Talk a little about the genre of music and what an audi audience member can expect out of this group. Well, it's a very interesting uh, group in that while they, you know, they do use uh, Latin instruments and, and the influence of Latin music, um, all, the all of the uh, members of the uh, band are uh, from, or they, you know, they make their home now in Kentucky, but all of them have, Louisville specifically, but they have, you know, found their way from Latin countries. Mm -hmm. And so um, they combine, you know, that idea of Latin music with Appalachian, Appalachian folk traditions. And uh, it's a unique blend of those sounds. They use uh, classical and steel guitars, uh, traditional native wood flutes, pan flutes, harmonica, mandolin, bass, and, and a lot of percussion um, that is associated with that Latin feel sort of thing. So uh, it, it's a unique genre It is. It's, it's really almost a world music kind of, you know, it's not just what that, you know, it has a, a, a world flavor to it. Very good. Dr. Anderson is chair of the Div Division of Humanities at UPike. I'd like to ask you, what are the most important aspects or ideas of the study of humanities that contribute to a liberal arts education? I could not be happier that you're asking me this. Uh -huh. <laughs> because so often, no truly I am, um, so often we feel on the fence. We, we feel, humanities folks feel, as I said earlier, that we have to defend ourselves because the folks who pay for a private liberal arts education don't quite see why do I have to take a course in music? Sure. Uh, as advisors, we justify this all the time. Students come in when we register them for classes, and they have to take nine hours in the humanities. That means three courses. But they really, really just want to take courses in their major. Well, I could go back all the way to the Middle Ages, but I try not to bore the students too much. The essence is, we don't want to educate what the Germans, for example, do in their vocational schools, folks who merely know their trade. Sure. The narrow-minded folks who function just in one profession, 
and are not the well-rounded citizens who can then function in a democracy. What we would like to educate, and I firmly believe in that, and that's why I am so thrilled to be here, and I'm still here. This is the foundation for everything that allows us to be a fully developed human being. Right. We require students to try with a smorgasbord approach, a little bit of everything. Right. And that way discover humanities, the human side of what and who we are. They discover areas they otherwise might have not known. Sure. And, and one of the things that, that came to my mind this morning as I, as I read the news, um, let's think about the, the climate summit. Well, the ecologists tell us all about that. The scientists, they tell us all about that. Do I really want to read another scientific article about that? Mm -hmm. No. But if I hear, let's say, Smetanas Moldau, or look at, or hear, or read a Wordsworth poem about the daffodils, or Walden's nature, then I feel connected with other people. And I appreciate what they felt in right. another century about nature, about this planet. And I am connected with people halfway around the planet. I don't even have to speak their language. Right. I feel, and the humanities is all about this intangible aspect that makes us human and something really quintessential to being a functioning human being would be lost if we didn't pass that on to the next generation. I know students who've never had a music course, sure. and when they took music appreciation, eyes were opened and they decided to take piano. Sure. It is just amazing. We don't, I mean, I would never be a, a pianist, but I take, I, I learn about music appreciation, how to appreciate it, what to listen for, sure. and how to interpret a painting, and then I can truly value another human's talent. Right. Isn't, isn't that fabulous? Isn't that amazing that some other creature, some other human, just like, just like I am, has that? You know, Beethoven's fifth, it's not a computer that created that, but a human being. And that's what I want the students to, to get. And they don't, they don't hear or feel that in any other class. Right. It's, it's, it's not factual knowledge. It's, it's something that, that we need to pass on in other ways. And that's what the Humanities on the Hill right. is all about. It's, it's having fun. It's something outside the classroom. It's just letting it all go. That's why we have it on a Friday, and just really go out there and poke fun at Shakespeare. True. You know, take a piece of chalk and draw whatever comes to mind on the sidewalk because it gets washed away by the rain anyway later, right? right. Well, and then that whole a line of fun about everything, too. I've forgotten to mention that the Spanish department is offering a Spanish game show right. as part of this event, nice. too. So, you know, it is, it is about having fun with the humanities. I mean, not everything has to be about competition, about scoring 100%, or about, about rote learning. If we forget about the joy that that broadening the horizon can be, we're, we're a sad race, you know, we're, we're, we need to do more. Sure. So, mm. so this is what it's all about, and I'm hoping, I'm hoping our students feel that, that we're having fun, that we're not always pressured, that we're not always stressed, you know, because most of the time we are, <laughs> but, <laughs> you know. While I'm not a musician, I learn to appreciate great music. And while I'm not a writer, I can appreciate a great literary work or an artist's drawing or whatever the case may be, See? whatever yeah. humanity it relates to. While I don't have that talent, I learn to appreciate and value what those offer to us. And they make us individuals rather than machines. 
Well, and they also make you patrons of the arts then too. Sure. That's how we build an audience or people that are going to come to art shows or people who are going to read the, the literature or right. things like that. It's by learning about, you know, the the humanities as a whole that makes, you know, makes them able to, you know, and that, you know, continues. That's how we have a society that, you know, is based on what it is based on and the respect and, you know, all of that. Sure. Humanities on the Hill takes over the University of Pikeville campus October 10th, 10 a.m. throughout the day and wraps up with a performance by Appalachian at 7, at seven. on the 10th. Uh, Dr. Westgate, how can the community be involved uh, simply by showing up or if they want more information, how could they learn more? Um, they can learn more by um, ca uh, calling 606-218-5270 or they can also email me at the campus. It's philipwestgate at upike.edu and I will do my best to answer back any questions or clear up anything that they might wonder. Very good, Humanities on the Hill. Dr. Westgate, thanks for being with us. We Thank look you. forward to it. And Dr. Brigida Anderson, Chair of Division of Humanities at the University of Pikeville, our pleasure. We look forward to it. You've inspired today. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you. If I, if I couldn't, if I, if I couldn't, I shouldn't be in this position. It's, it's, what I, it's what I live for. A passion for yes. the humanities. That's what you've seen today on this edition of Where the 99 Lead. Just another part, and an important part of the University of Pikeville campus, the Division of Humanities. We hope you take part in Humanities on the Hill. October 10th, mark your calendar. Thanks to Dr. Anderson and Dr. Westgate, our guests today on this edition of Where the 99 Lead. I'm Andrew Joyce, your host. You've been tuned to Where the 99 Lead, a presentation of the University of Pikeville, the leading university of Central Appalachia.